non-destructive X-ray fluorescence, the advantages are it's a non-destructive measurement of the wafer surface. It's multi-element. We get detection limits for transition metals and the E9 atoms per centimeter squared. It's sensitive to particles and it's easy to operate. The disadvantages include it doesn't have great light element sensitivity and sometimes we have spectral overlaps. The instrumentation includes an X-ray source, a monochromator for our incident X-ray beam. It also has a very precise sample stage with X, Y, Z, and theta movement. So we can have very precise and repeatable alignment of the wafer substrate to the X-ray beam. Also a silicon drift detector. Some key applications of TXRF include, it's a non-destructive measurement. This is probably one of the most useful applications of TXRF that we can take a wafer substrate and measure it many times. So it's non-destructive and it quantifies the surface elemental contamination and that elemental contamination range is from sodium to uranium. It provides elemental maps of contamination across the wafer surface. And also we can measure other substrates in thin films. So we can measure glass, sapphire, silicon carbide, gallium arsenide, Indian phosphide wafers for other applications of semiconductor devices. Also some thin films. It's a useful measurement check at many semiconductor processing steps. So this includes wafer substrates that have just arrived at the fab, incoming silicon. We can also TXRF wafers after a critical clean, etch, or implant, or any other steps in the semiconductor process. And TXRF is also very sensitive to particulate contamination. And I'll talk more later about how this is especially useful for monitoring tool to wafer fab contamination. Fabs want clean wafer substrates because metallic contamination degrades our device performance. It deteriorates our insulators and it increases the leakage current and contact resistance. This gives us an overall reduction in yield and reliability. There's always new and emerging device processing that creates metal contamination control challenges. Also, every step in making these computer chips can contribute to contamination. The equipment, the deposition systems, the gas piping, the humans that work in the fab, the process engineers and factory operators also can be a source of contamination. That's why we wear these clean room suits to mitigate that. The materials that make the computer chips, as Chris spoke about, the chemicals, the water, those can be a source of contamination. So every step in the process can contribute contamination to the wafer. Monitoring and diagnosing wafer contamination is essential in all fabs and we can do this with TXRF. In the TXRF measurement, we are operating well below the critical angle, so all our x-rays simply bounce off the surface, and we have a one centimeter diameter spot size, and this is defined by the silicon drift detector that sits very close to the surface of the wafer to give us good sensitivity. The wafer moves on a stage underneath the detector, and this is how we're able to map the entire wafer surface and define our incident angle. Something different with the semiconductor TXRF versus the benchtop models is the measurement is also done in vacuum. This gives us the highest sensitivity and the lowest limits of detection that the semiconductor industry demands. In order to get good sensitivity of elements all across the periodic table, we use three different lines of incident X-ray for our TXRF analysis. The first is the tungsten M line for sodium, magnesium, and aluminum. The second is the tungsten L beta line, which excites transition metals. And we also have the high energy source, which is at 24 keV portion of the continuum. And this is for exciting the heavier elements. Here's an example of our tungsten L beta one measurement spectrum. We use the tungsten L beta one line at 9.67 because it's a suitable excitation for all the elements in green, the K lines of silicon through zinc, and then we use the L lines of the heavier elements in green to measure with this line. When you look at the tungsten L beta measurement spectrum, you typically see two anchor peaks. The first anchor peak is our silicon source or our substrate material of our wafer. Then the second anchor peak is the instant radiation. In between these two peaks is the elements of contamination that we've detected on the surface of the wafer. We choose the tungsten M line for our light element analysis of sodium, magnesium, and aluminum because it's 
Excitation energy is just below the absorption edge of silicon. Silicon is a large peak and it is always present because it comes from our wafer substrate. And so in order to get better sensitivity for aluminum and to separate those peaks, we use the tungsten M-line to excite the aluminum, but then it does not excite the silicon. Here's an example of a high energy line measurement spectrum. All the elements you see in blue are suitable with this line of excitation. Because we are higher in energy, we get better sensitivity for exciting the heavier metals on the periodic table. Now we'll talk about how we use TXRF to monitor a process tool to wafer contamination. Metallic contamination typically spreads through the fab between the solid contact points of the processing equipment and the wafer itself. So this processing equipment handles the wafers with end effectors, wafer wands, edge grip handlers, chucks. It's the mechanical pieces to the equipment that can transfer the contamination to. And studies have shown that this contamination is spread most efficiently in particulate form. So these particles can flow through the fabs and transfer from the tools to the wafers at these specific contact points. And each processing tool has its own contact points with the wafer. We can determine what these contact points are by using another type of equipment called a particle scanner. So we'll take a virgin wafer, we'll cycle it through the processing tool, and then send it for a particle map. And our TXRF software is also compatible with particle scanner files, and so we can easily create specific coordinate maps for our TXRF measurements that match the processing tool contact points. Here's an example of a TXRF analysis report that detected chromium, iron, nickel, and copper at the center point. Because we made these coordinate specific TXRF maps that align with the contact points of the processing tool, the TXRF engineer can report back that the aligner chuck specifically is contaminated with these elements. And this was more sort of a traditional TXRF measurement where we had limited coverage of the wafer. Maybe we were only measuring three to five points on a 12 inch wafer, but we measured for 500 seconds per spot. So we got excellent measurement sensitivity but limited wafer coverage because I can't tell the process engineer anything about the contamination outside of these four or five points that we determined to be specific to their processing tool. Customers wanted to know more about the contamination on their wafer surface outside of the three to five measurement points in the traditional TXRF measurement, but they didn't want to decrease their throughput. So sweeping TXRF was developed because it uses shorter acquisition times and software angle alignments to analyze many more spots across the wafer. So it provides mapping data that gives more spatial information about the contamination on the wafer surface. Before we were only sampling maybe 1% of the wafer surface if we're only measuring three to five points on a 12 inch wafer, but now mapping measurements can get up to 25% wafer coverage. These shorter measurement times affect, do affect our sensitivity and precision, but we can work with each of our customers to develop recipes specific to their needs for throughput, measurement area, and the sensitivity that they require for their control limits in the fab. And the spectrum from the sweeping measurement can also be accumulated so all the spectrum from the, all the measurement points across the wafer can be summed to give an average result for each element on the wafer. Here is two examples of sweeping TXRF application data. These are two separate wafers, but both saw nickel, iron, and chromium contamination. On this first wafer and from this first processing tool, most of the contamination that we saw for the nickel, iron, and chromium came from the center of the wafer. This was determined to be coming from the tool chuck. On this second wafer here, the nickel, iron, and chromium contamination was located mainly around the edge of the wafer. This processing tool used a wafer edge clamp made of stainless steel, and that was determined to be the source of the contamination on this wafer. So this just demonstrates how these elemental maps are very useful for process engineers. If they have a clear idea and a visual picture of where the contamination is coming from, then it makes it easier for them to develop decon procedures 
to clean up this contamination in their processing tools to limit future tool to product wafer contamination events. Vapor phase decomposition is a wafer surface sampling technique in which the wafer is exposed to hydrofluoric acid vapor. This vapor dissolves the oxide layer on the wafer surface. After the oxide is decomposed, what's left on the wafer is water and the trace metal contamination that was in the oxide layer. The etched wafer surface is now hydrophobic, which allows us to then take a dilute acid droplet, scan it across the surface of the wafer, and collect the oxide layer contaminants into one droplet. We can take that droplet and put it in a vial and measure it on ICPMS, or we can take the droplet, dry it on the wafer, and measure it on TXRF. VPD gives us great sensitivity because we concentrate the entire wafer surface into one sample. When comparing VPD ICPMS with VPD TXRF, generally the ICPMS measurement is considered a little bit more labor intensive and requires a chemist or highly trained technician when compared to TXRF. Also, the VPD ICPMS can be done manually without automated equipment. However, the analysis is destructive and the VPD droplet volume is small, so sometimes you can only get one or two runs of the droplet on the ICPMS. VPD TXRF, the dry droplet can be measured multiple times. However, the drying process can be difficult and requires automated VPD equipment or a controlled environment. VPD as a wafer sampling surface technique is more sensitive overall, especially for light elements, and concentrates the entire wafer surface. But we lose that valuable spatial information that we gained from just direct TXRF. Direct TXRF is also better for heavy elements like ruthenium and gold that don't go into solution as easily and are more difficult to recover in the VPD process.